Hi, this is Kat Khan, and I am interviewing Anthony Del Col, who is in the Artist Alley here at the American Library Association Annual Conference in Anaheim, California. In wonderful, and, uh, glorious Anaheim, California. Yeah, sitting in the shade in the patio. It's 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 wonderful here. It's really cold inside, so it's nice to be able to take a break and do this interview. Okay. Well, I just have a few questions for you. Sure. Um, first of all, how did you get your start in in comics? Well, this is uh, Kill Shakespeare. I'm the co-creator and mm -hmm. co-writer of Kill Shakespeare, along with Connor McCreary and Andy Blanchet as our artist. Um, this is actually our first. Um, this is my this is my first comic book project. Um, I have uh, extensive backgrounds in uh, film, and TV, and music up in Canada, where we're from. A. Eh? Uh, but no, this is, first, this is my first uh, project in comics. Mm. I mean, with uh, we came up with the idea for Kill Shakespeare. We immediately thought that it was a video game first. Uh, then we thought maybe it was a feature film. And then it took us a while before we kind of placed our fingers on the fact that it's probably best as a, as a comic book and graphic novel series. Um, and the reason being that, uh, first of all, Shakespeare is very... Um, uh, Shakespeare, Shakespeare's plays and his stories are very visual, they're very kinetic. Uh, in a comic book, you can, cap you can capture all of that. Uh, and you can do it for a fraction of a cost of what you would be in a feature film uh, or video game or anything like that. And, you know, we just love the fact that um, Shakespeare is, is very highbrow, it's perceived as very highbrow, and comic books, unfortunately, are kind of perceived as very lowbrow. Um, mm -hmm. And so we'd like to have that combination of bringing those two together and kind of meet halfway through. Yeah, actually, if, you know, when you, I guess if you know Shakespeare, you realize that was street theater back then. Oh, yeah. I mean, Sha <laughs> we, often, we often say Shakespeare was the greatest entertainer of all time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he was, if, if he was alive today, he would be Steven Spielberg times James Cameron times Stan Lee times, um, you know, uh, Bono. I mean, he was, he was the ultimate right. entertainer. I mean, he created entertainment that would appeal to the royalty that would have their own private uh, seats in the balconies, mm -hmm. as well as the average person that would pay a couple ducks and have to stand in the mud uh, and watch his productions. And I mean, he, his stories had everything, and that's exactly what we tried to do with Kill Shakespeare. Okay, great. Um, how have libraries affected what you do? Have you been able to get the, the comic into libraries have you yeah. found support from them oh yeah we've, we've found a lot of support I mean uh, not only um, in attending things like ALA here but just in general I mean because one of one of our major goals with Kill Shakespeare is to um, shine a, shine a, shine a spotlight on care uh, shine a spotlight on Shakespeare and his characters and get people that otherwise may not be interested in the bar get them excited about it mm -hmm. um, and I mean we we often joke, and a lot of people have actually started to pick us up, that we're kind of a, a gateway drug into Shakespeare. And I think a lot of, a lot of librarians have kind of, uh, have kind of captured that as well, or kind of caught on to that. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, the whole goal is to get, you know, to, to get, uh, it could be teenagers, or it could even be people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, and we hear from this, uh, we hear a lot about this, you know, get them excited about Shakespeare. So, I mean, we heavily involve librarians in it. I mean, we love to, uh, we do talks at libraries, at schools, about Shakespeare, about comics, graphic novels, about entrepreneurship, about the writing process, the art process, and in fact, in the actual design of Kill Shakespeare, we actually have a lot of, had, we've had a lot of librarians uh, that have that, um, done some consulting with us uh, in terms of like what works, what doesn't work, uh, what might be a little too racy uh, in terms of, say, um, uh, I mean, there's no nudity, there's no sex or anything in this, but just, you know, like, uh, are we showing too much skin in mm. some scenes? You know, because comic books are known for very voluptuous females, and Lady Macbeth is a little voluptuous. Mm. So we want to make sure that uh, there's not too much skin and also violent content, uh, just to make sure that it is palatable for people as young as 12 and 13. Uh-huh. Okay, great. Um, is there another comic by anyone else out there that you would recommend to someone who wants to read? Um, I mean, my favorite comic series of all time is uh, Why the Last Man by Brian mm -hmm. Givon. I mean, it's just, it's a great concept. I mean, for those that uh, aren't familiar with it, it's uh, one day all of a sudden this virus affects the earth and every single male species, uh, not only of humans, but of, uh, of, of every species, just drops dead. Uh, except for one man and his pet monkey. Yeah. Uh, and he has to try to figure out what's going on and he wants to try to get to Australia um, to, to see his girlfriend. Uh, but no, I mean, it's got everything in it. It's got, it's got a lot of comedy. It's got Shakespeare references, of course. I mean, the main character is called York, uh, hence Why the Last Man. Uh, it's got a lot of intrigue, suspense. Uh, it's got a sci-fi element to it. Um, yeah, it's just, it has all elements, so it's something I really recommend. Mm -hmm. I've actually recommended to people that uh, haven't read uh, graphic novels or, uh, at all in the past, mm -hmm. and they, they come back, back to me tell me how much they love it. So definitely Why the Last Man by Brian Kavon. Oh yeah, that's a great book. 
Now, what one piece of advice would you give to someone who came up to you and said, man, I, would, I want to start creating comics? Uh, I always give two pieces of advice. I'm okay. kind of cheating in my answer. Okay. <clears throat> one is to, uh, and I hate to use it because it's uh, a slogan by a top corporation, but just do it. I mean, there's a lot of people that talk about, oh, I'd love to get into comics, I'd love to, I'd love to be involved in the industry, I'd love to write, or I'd love to draw, or I'd love to do whatever aspect, but just go ahead and do it. Uh, I mean, Malcolm Gladwell talks about in uh, Outliers, or Outliers, sorry, um, the uh, 10,000 hour rule, uh, and which is that, you know, whether it's the Beatles or athletes or, you know, musicians or anyone, I mean, you need 10,000 hours of practice or rehearsal in order, uh, in order for you to reach that, that level of um, expertise. Uh, and the key thing is just start now. Just start now. Start doing it. And, and in today's day, I mean, it's it, this is the perfect time to do it. I mean, you could you could uh, get put together a web comic and put it online for free, and you build up an audience there. Which kind of leads to the second point, which is always think about your branding and your positioning. What makes you more? What makes you unique compared to everybody else that's out there? So always think about the end goal or the end consumer, or the end reader. Uh, I mean, who is that's going to read? what your product is and what makes you unique, or your, your product or your comic unique, um, you know, different than everyone else. Okay, great. And I'm now going to put you on the spot. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, what would you like... Are you going to make me cry? No, I no, hope not. I hope not. <laughs> what would you like libraries to do for comics that you haven't seen them do yet? Wow, that is putting me on the spot. Uh, I mean, the first first thing is that I mean, not every library really collects graphic novels or comic books. I mean, I'd like to see more. I'd like to see every library carry graphic novel or comic books. I mean, not only does it help circulation, uh, but I mean, it just it reaches out to new audiences. Uh, the other thing is try to um, even those that do carry graphic. See, oh she, dear. Even even she's upset. <laughs> um, um, no, the other thing, unfortunately, and I mean, even those that do have graphic novels, sometimes they really get a one. Uh, mm. and, uh, and maybe it's because a lot of books, she, oh she's really upset about the Yes, yes. Oh, dear. See, you're hurting librarians oh, no. properly. You're hurting them. Look, listen to her. Oh. Listen to her. Oh. Uh, no, I mean, uh, and just... And most, most librarians that, that, that do pick up graphic novels, especially the ones that's in ALA here, or uh, especially the graphic novel pavilion, I mean, they're okay with, you know, they, they often pick up the indie titles, but some, some of those are the best titles that are available. Some of the books, best, some of the best books and best stories available. So, I mean, don't just go with Marvel and DC, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with Marvel and DC, but look to, look to the other publishers, like look to the Arkeas and the IDWs and the Images, uh, you know, and, uh, and uh, even the self-published titles, mm -hmm. and because uh, there are some really, really fascinating stories, and do whatever you can to promote them. Uh, you know, put together special graphic novel months or weeks, and you know, special displays, and, and promote these indie titles, because uh, not only do they really need them, but I think you really, in the long run, you're going to not only help the artists and the creators, but you're going to share some really fascinating stories.